Hey everybody, we recently had a request to build a rolling portable bar. So today we're going to show you how we made this one out of walnut and oak. Cheers. The first thing we had to do was build the carcass of the bar. Since the inside of the bar would be open, we started with three quarter inch maple sanded plywood. Now we don't have the largest table saw, so for this task, we broke out our handy track saw. Track saws are great for getting good, clean, straight cuts. The best part about a track saw is that you're only limited in length by the number of tracks you have since they bolt together. Thankfully, we had a great day, so we set up our sawhorses outside, clamped down our track, and cut our front panel, two sides, and the bottom. We also cut a couple of rails. The assembly process was similar to building any standard cabinet. We used tight bond three wood glue and trim nails to secure both sides. You'll notice we already have a thin strip of spare wood glued and nailed to the back side of the front panel. That's going to serve as one ledge for the counter in the ice chest later. Once we have both sides in place, we glue and secure the bottom panel. Since this bar will be fairly heavy, the bottom panel will run edge to edge with the top and sides resting on the top of it. The great thing about this process is that as long as each panel is square and each edge is flush, you know the cabinet is going to be square. Once the bottom is in place, we slide the carcass forward and install a four inch rail on the inside of the top. This rail serves as an anchor point, allowing us to later glue and bolt the bar top in place. Unfortunately, adding this at this point was a bit of a misstep on my part because it made the installation of the ice chest really difficult later. If I had to do it over, I would have added this a little later in the build. Finally, we install a six inch rail, the same height as the rail in the back. This one is larger simply because it will have less support. It is also the same dimension as the speed rails we chose for the front of the bar. The carcass build actually was a really easy process. The hardest part about it is seeing Mike without a beard. From here, Mike installed the heavy duty five inch casters we ordered. These wheels will carry 1,800 pounds, so they were a little bit of overkill, but well worth it for the price. These wheels came with both nuts and bolts and lag screws. For some reason, we opted to use the bolts, but really the screws were plenty large enough to work. Now that we have the wheels attached, we can move this beast around the shop a bit more easily. Next, we unbox the ice chest to do a dry fit and make sure I hadn't screwed up any measurements as I'm apt to do. We found this chest online at a great price. It's double wall insulated, has a removable lid, and comes with a flexible drain line so you can drain melted ice water out onto the ground or a bucket or I guess whatever you choose to use. Thankfully, the sink fit perfectly, if not a bit snugly. So I'm one for one on this bar build at this stage. From here, we have to start covering the outside of our cabinet carcass. Since this was an actual order for a real customer, we wanted to make the edges as polished as we could. So we set up the table saw to cut a 45 degree angle and rip each board to cover the four corners. 
Once the corner pieces were cut to height, we clamped them in place so we could get measurements for the top and bottom pieces of the trim. Once those are clamped in place, we brought our top trim over and marked it. A quick trip to the miter saw and we could test fit them. The video makes it look like we got it just right every single time, but of course that's the magic of editing. I should point out at this stage that this bar build is actually inspired by the always great Jason over at Bourbon Moth. So our process is fairly similar to a piece that he built. We decided to pocket screw the trim together. We flipped each piece on its face, drilled pocket screws into the back corner pieces with our handy little pocket screw jig, and glued and screwed each joint together while they were securely clamped to our work table. So at this stage, we effectively have an oversized frame. A little bit of glue on the back, and we can then secure it in place with some clamps and a whole heck of a lot of trim nails. This process was replicated on the rest of the sides of the bar. Again, this step could have been simplified. We could have just cut and glued each trim piece in place. The assembled frame does add a bit of strength and stability, but really on a build like this, it's probably not strictly necessary. So then came the tedious and most time consuming part, the patchwork pattern. This part took the most time, required the most steps, and was probably the most frustrating. We started with rough cut lumber and faced one side of each board on our joiner. We also turned it on its end and jointed one edge. We had a whole bunch of red oak stock lying around, so we decided to use that. We set up our bandsaw to about 3 eighths of an inch so we could rip at least two pieces from each board. Some of the stock was a little thicker and, and we were able to get three. Now each board is planed down smooth and even to a consistent one quarter inch. Then each board was run through the table saw to about three and a half inches. Why three and a half inches? No idea. No idea at all. Just sounded good at the time. We secured a stop to the end of the saw to make this go a bit more quickly and ensure that each piece was uniform. The miter saw is set to 60 degrees and Mike is able to just flip over each cut and run it up to the stop block for the next one. Every single triangle was sanded to 240 grit. We then took each one to the belt sander and hit the edge at 45 degrees. This edge would give the finished pattern a nice three-dimensional look, but more importantly, it's going to hide all or any of the imperfections that we were sure to make. The next part took a lot of time, but was probably the most fun. We drew a line from the top to bottom dead center of our available workspace and started laying out the star patterns. We secured each piece with three pin nails and a heck of a lot of wood glue, finally to cover any gaps we might have had and to give the bar a bit more polished fancy look, we added some tiny oak pencil trim. To make the bar top, we used some five quarter rough cut walnut. Since it was so long, we wanted to cut right triangles out of it so the sides would essentially just swing in to make a U shape. This would allow the grain pattern to run and follow through the whole bar. To get the pieces started, we set up a longer fence on our table saw by just clamping a longer piece of lumber to the existing fence. Prior to cutting our triangles, we had jointed what appeared to be the straightest edge, so now we just needed a uniform width. Our short edge needed to run against the fence, which made it a little bit more difficult to start. So the extended fence actually solved that problem. Again, we pulled out our handy pocket hole jig and drilled the holes on the bottom of each side piece. Pocket screws have a tendency to draw up one side, so we made sure to clamp both pieces to our work table so we could avoid that, uh, a step we sometimes forget. A couple of quick screws in each side with some wood glue and we're all set. We had had this piece in the barn loft for a couple of years now. It was a massive 16 inch wide by 12 foot long piece 
that had just been waiting for the right project to come along. So now we have a nice square walnut bar top. This particular bar had a logo engraved on the top by request of the customer. So we engraved that section on our CNC router and filled it with epoxy, but that's a whole other video. For the bottom part of the bar, we chose a wipe on poly and just rubbed in the finish in thin layers. We used two coats. For the top, we chose Rubio Mono Coat with the optional hardener. This stuff is the best. You just mix the oil with the second stage hardener to the ratio provided and apply a small amount and squeegee it on. And a little goes a long way. Now once the mono coat is spread evenly, all you have to do is rub it in very well. Wait a few minutes, then buff it back out until your towel is clean. And that's literally it. Most woods take one coat. Next came the counter for the bar. We were very lucky for this project and found a used piece of beautiful granite at a local restore for just $40, so we couldn't pass it up. The only problem was that our bar and ice chest were both about 20 and a half inches deep. We filled a spray bottle with water to try to keep the top wet and keep the dust down. A quick wipe down to get all the dust off the counter and we're ready for install. You'll notice here that our ice chest is actually on the opposite side. We noticed after cutting the granite that we had only one polished end and it wasn't the one we wanted. Sliding the chest to the other end and no one would ever know. We used a bead of silicone to secure the counter to the frame we had added a couple of 2 before braces to hold the weight in the center. And thankfully, it fits like a glove. To cover any jagged edges from our not-so-professional granite cuts, we installed a piece of ceramic tile trim. This gave the counter a polished look and really tied the whole bar together. The absolute last thing to do was add the speed rails to the front. We found these rails online and decided to add one to each side, leaving the center open so the bartender doesn't have to reach over bottles to mix a drink. A happy bartender, very important. And there we have it, one three-dimensional portable rolling bar of happiness. Thanks so much for watching. Please be sure you like this video leave a comment or question for us, and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to our channel.